Let's talk about bilge pumps. We were on a boat just recently the following video that we found the bilge pump was broken. For some reason, people seem to neglect their bilge pumps. How often do you guys check your bilge pumps? And then if you could leave me a comment and tell me what you check them for. For instance, do you check to make sure the bilge is clean? Do you check to make sure that there's no debris in the bilge that could block the bilge pump from running? or the debris could prevent the automatic float switch from operating correctly. That all needs to be checked, it should be kept clean, there should be no debris down there, any slime or anything, all that stuff should be cleaned up and inspect the condition of the bilge pump, make sure the housing is not cracked and it's securely fastened to the hull of the boat. You wouldn't believe how many times we go down there and bilge pumps are floating around on their side or whatever. The float switches don't work. Don't forget to check your manual switches too. They need to work in manual and auto. Every time we go on a boat, that's usually one of the things we just automatically take a look at is bilge pumps because, well, if your bilge pumps aren't working and you have a leak, you're gonna sink your boat. All right, so today we are gonna be replacing this bilge pump and this switch. And uh, we noticed that this bilge pump wasn't getting a suction every time that it kicked on. And we took a look at it and you can actually see over here where the housing on that bilge pump is actually cracked and we we're thinking that's probably allowing some air to get in there causing the pump to not get a suction so while we're in here working we're just going to go ahead and swap that out and go ahead and replace that float switch since we're down here so the first thing i'm going to do is get into here and disconnect the electrical wiring one thing to keep in mind about bilge pumps is normally they're wired straight to the battery source and that's because you want this bilge pump to be available at all time in the event that this uh, compartment down here starts to fill up with water it will continuously pump it out as the level rises keep the boat from uh, taking on too much water i'll start out here disconnect the wiring and then this is going to be uh, pretty much plug and play i'll pull the old hose out disconnect that hose pull the pump out pull the switch out and then mount the new ones in to the existing wiring in here. We've chosen the uh, Rule 2000 Heavy Duty as the uh, bilge pump we're gonna be installing. And to be honest, that's because that's what already exists in here. So we know it'll fit up uh, without too much work. What's your go-to if you're gonna replace your bilge pump? What bilge pump would you use? All right, AJ, this is your show today. Is it? You're the big dog. Is Tell it? Tell me what you're doing here. Well, right now, we're back on Miss Blanche, checking for leaks. Apparently, they splashed it, took it for a little cruise, and now there is a lot of standing water here in the hull on both sides. This side more than any. Look at it down here. See all that? Now, Chris, where do you think this leak could come from? Condensation? Not. Not. Not that uh, much water. I don't know. We are uh, poke around and try to figure it out. It's going to be fun. Oh yeah, Got good look. times. Tight engine rooms. Tight spaces. Tight spaces. Unlike tight lines. Oh, no, poke your head up, get back up here. You know how much work this is? Yeah. Now oh. you're running the show today. Oh, what are you doing? God, greasing bull joints. It's yeah. Knocking rust off of them. Nice. All right, we got ourselves a whole little work list and uh, first thing we do is some greasing up some joints. I'm allowed to get back in the hole. Get back into your hole. All right, so right now I'm prepping the wiring to install so that way we can uh, clip these wires and just go straight to connecting it. One thing I'm going to do since I do know that these uh, wires coming out of here have 12 volts on them is while I have them clipped and disconnected I'm going to throw some tape over the end just to make sure that they don't accidentally come into contact with each other because that 12 volts if you short it straight to the ground could cause some damage. So I'll clip these wires one at a time, insulate them as I clip them and then I'll have these ready with the butt splices already installed. So all I have to do is pull the old wires out, put the new wires in, and uh, crimp down the new butt splices. So we've got the wires disconnected from the float switch and the pump, and we've got the old wires up here taped off. And now we're gonna start swapping this out. So we're gonna remove this uh, larger strainer. So that this strainer right here is gonna block all the big things from getting in the pump. And then that'll keep it from getting uh, clogged up. So we'll take the old one out, pop the new one in, and then we'll throw the pump in there and then 
pop this switch out too. So it's gonna be four screws here to swap this out, and then there's two screws on that float switch. Hey Brett, what, what is this great little thing on this line right here? That is gonna be a check valve. And what it does is it swings open to allow flow out when the pump starts, but then when the pump stops, any remaining water that's in the hose, or if somehow this hose were to get below the water line, it'll stop water com from coming back in through the pump. What's next, Brett? All right, so you can see this float switch. We have the, uh, the basket for the pump installed. So all we gotta do is snap that pump in after we get it wired. But this float switch has two screws, and one of the screws goes in this front area right here, and you can put the screw in and then slide this in and then put the back screw in and it'll hold it in place, but it won't be tight because you can't get a screwdriver down in there. Or the other option is it looks like this pump or this float switch snaps off right here at the bottom if you got a flathead screwdriver. And then we can mount this and then just snap the float switch into it. So that's what we're gonna do so we can get both of those screws in there tight. Okay, now that we have the uh, pump and the float switch installed, now we just need to wire it up up here. So I've got the butt splices already installed on this, and I don't know if you noticed this old wire, how it was braided. So that's what they did to keep it kind of all together. So we'll see how long the wires are. If I have room to braid it like that again, I can, or we can just throw some zip ties on it, you know, every three or four inches and keep everything looking nice and neat up to the switch up here in the power. Taking a look at this wiring, the negative goes to the negative, so you got your black coming in. Your green here just goes to the float switch, so that is the automatic, right? And that's what's gonna be providing power if the float switch lifts and it'll start the pump. And that has to be wired on the battery side of the battery switches to be ABYC compliant so that your bilge pump will automatically start if there's water accumulating in the bilge. Over here on this white lead, you can see it's got a brown lead going to the pump and it's also got a gray lead going to the float switch. And then both of these are gonna connect to the switch itself. All right, so this is your manual power. So this is what's gonna give you power if you wanna manually operate the pump by flipping this switch. The way we disconnected this, we're able to just go gray to gray, black to black, brown to brown, gray to gray, but you can see in here that there's other connections in here already existing to allow these connections to connect to that switch. How's the progress going, Brett? All right, so we've got all the wires reconnected in here, reconnected to the switch, and before we button this up, it's always nice to do a quick op check to make sure it works. Manual mode. Manual mode works. Auto mode works. So everything is wired up correctly, and we just need to put the cover back on this and uh, clean up these wires and make them look nice. Sweet. Trying to figure out this voltage problem. Brett's been here for like the past week digging away at this. It's written eight volts ground to ground. Let's wire that one up and see what happens. Hopefully this will solve our issue. Okay. Brand new battery. You could just take it to West Marine and swab it out though, right? I'm pretty sure you still have to pay. They only give you like a deductible. No, oh, right. so this this will be under warranty. Oh, will it? Yeah. Now, the thing is, is that we got to get the, the company that bought it for this boat to, to uh, send us their receipt or their information. Where's the other lead that was on there? On this? Yeah, there were two on the negative. Uh, so that was just to put the uh, this one. Oh, okay. It was just so the negative on the start battery in this was the same. Well, let's wire it up the same way. Yeah, fair enough. Voltage doesn't come back, then we're pretty sure there's a problem with the battery causing that voltage on the ground. What's the old school way? So you tighten the nut down by hand, and you take your lug and the nut at the same time. And twist them? And twist them together until it singes itself down enough to test it. All right. Not a long-term solution. Not. So literally, this is putting this in, there's not a difference in anything. It would help if I was on DC voltage. That would help. 0.1. That's what I was getting yesterday. 12.4. Well, I'm gonna leave this battery in, see what happens. 
you know, come back the next day and if it's back, if it goes back down to like six and is showing all this weird shit that it does, then we know that it's the boat doing something to yeah. the batteries and not that we got a defective battery. Yeah. So we're just gonna leave this like this for like uh, a day? Shop option. At least it'll give you a better troubleshooting for the bow thruster now that you got a solid 12 volts coming through. Yeah. Yeah, strange things have happened. Yep. All right, what trouble have we gotten ourselves into today? All right, so last week we had an issue where there was six and a half volts on the ground bus. We uh, disconnected some wires coming from the ignition back here. And then when we disconnected these two wires coming from the battery isolator, it went away. So our theory was that the 12 volts was coming from the battery, leaking through the isolator, going to the ignition wire, and then through the alternator to ground via that path because of a faulty isolator. So when we disconnected it, it went away. We thought we had it fixed. And this morning when we came back, that voltage was back after attempting to recharge the house battery yesterday. So now we've taken one of our batteries for the stern thruster and placed it in the house battery position and the stray voltage is gone again. So we're just gonna let this uh, spare battery sit here, see if it draws We're gonna it. leave the spare battery in the circuit for now and see what happens. See if that there's a fault in the house battery that's causing our issues. Sounds good. Yeah. All you gotta do. Seriously, all you gotta do is just figure it out. Just figure it out. And let us know if you guys have any suggestions. Please, we've been scratching our heads at this for a while now. Yeah. All right, Chris, what are you doing down in that hole? All right, so we got a couple of different things on our work list today. The uh, the first one was that the uh, air conditioning was not working properly. The owner mentioned that maybe it was a short power issue, which I can kind of think of, but we've already checked and we've only had one short tie for the boat and it's getting its full 240 volts to its monitoring panel. This is a, a boat that was construction or constructed and engineered and designed outside of the US because uh, I don't understand what any of that means. Pretty sure it's Italian. I'm pretty sure it's Italian or something or whatever. Got a little bit of a hurdle to come over there, tracking down the way that the boat is wired, where the inputs are, so, so we can verify it. So to begin with that, I think we did manage to get the air conditioning units turned on. It actually uses a chiller kind of style here. So that chills all the water, sends the water to all of the different air handlers and air handlers uh, cool off the rooms. So we did fire up all of the air conditioners on board and this thing did not kick on. But it did hear an alarm go off. I'm not sure where it was from, so we're gonna track that down. But I think my first goal is to keep it simple is I'm gonna see if it's getting power, try to figure out why it's not turning on and why it's not turning on the circulation pump or even turning on the raw water pump. We'll see. What do you guys think? I think it'll be easy. All you gotta All do. All you gotta do. Poke your head around there. Tell me what you're doing. Uh, taking the hose off for a water pump. Why are we doing that? Because the water pump seems to be clogged. So what we ended up doing is tracking down the water flow. So that pump that AJ is pulling out right now, it was flashing on its smart sensor, uh, red and blue, which means that it ran for a minute and a half and then faulted out. So then we double checked the uh, water tank. The gauge was a little off. It said it was like at 50%. We filled it up. In fact, we overfilled it. So we know that it's completely full and the gauge still says it's only at like 70%. So we knew that the gauge is a little off, but that's normal. So we know we have water. There's water coming up to the pump. The pump will turn on and run for a minute and a half once it turns off. So we are going to put a plug in the hose so we don't lose its prime, pull the pump off and look at the actual head of the pump to see if uh, the impeller inside of it is screwed up, blocked or something. All right, TJ's down here right now, doing his best to get this rusty seacock out of the way and out so we can replace it. Look at that thing, where's my flashlight? Yeah, get a flashlight on that. It's definitely seen better days. Oh yeah, look at that. A little crusty, but yeah. It's either get it out with a pipe wrench or get it out with an angle grinder. Either way, it's coming out today. Hopefully. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. Yeah, we're just going to beat on this uh, seacock for a little bit, see if we can loosen it up, and then hopefully get it out and get the replacement in right away. Easy enough, right, TJ? Yep. Oh, I'm going to crush my knuckles. A little bit of elbow grease. A little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of hammering. Got this crusty, dusty piece of crap out of there. 